They belong to various groups that make up what's generally referred to as the Temple Mount movement. Their ultimate goal is to demolish the mosque, this symbol of Palestinian nationhood, this sacred site to Muslims worldwide, and build a third Jewish temple there. For 34 years, the Temple Institute has been preparing for the rebuilding of the Holy Temple and the renewal of the divine service. They've even got detailed architectural renderings of what the temple would look like. They receive financial support from the Israeli government and charities in the US, Canada, and the UK. In recent years, they've even offered cash rewards to Jews who enter the Al-Aqsa compound or slaughter animals there, which was part of Jewish ritual at the original temple. They did not know it was their last Ramadan. So what excuse do we have now to not learn the Book of Allah? This Ramadan, learn all the stories from Quran in 30 days. Order your copies now. They want to destroy the Al-Aqsa Mosque to finally begin the construction of the third temple and welcome their Messiah. We cannot even remember how many times the Jews have tried to destroy the Al-Aqsa Mosque, but it is still there strong and protected. But this time, hell has broken loose over the heads of the innocent Muslims of Holy Land. We all know from the very beginning what was the purpose of all of this from the very beginning. Brothers and sisters, don't we remember the time when the beloved Al-Aqsa Mosque was under fire and the Muslims of the Holy Land had to help themselves to control this fire. On that very day, earlier, the supply of water to the mosque had been discontinued. Muslims could not see their integrity and faith and love burn in fire. They brought tubs and buckets of water from anywhere they could. And some local fire brigades arrived just in time with their limited resources. And Allah saved the mosque. Some very valuable belongings of the Muslims had gone in that fire. The 900-year-old wood and ivory pulpit gifted by Salahuddin Ayyubi as well as the walls and ceilings, many areas within the mosque were left blackened and burned. When protests came out, the Jews government blocked all the ways into the masjid. Brothers and sisters, this was the first time when the Friday prayer was not offered in the compound of the masjid. This tears the heart of a Muslim. One time in the year 1790, a group of Jews tried to implant explosive under the ground of the masjid. They got caught otherwise, the present generations would have never witnessed the holiest mosque for the Muslims today. It is only the will and protection of Allah that this holy place for the Muslims is still safe and intact. Several times, terrorists have been caught bringing explosive and bombs inside the mosque to finish it off altogether. Al-Aqsa Mosque is the first Qibla for Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that the Al-Aqsa Mosque is blessed and that what is around it is also blessed with His blessings. So brothers and sisters, can destructive and hypocritical non-believers and mushrikeen like the Jews ever be able to wage a war with the Almighty? They will never be able to destroy the Al-Aqsa Mosque. The Messenger Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala wasallam was taken to the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the journey of Asra al-Mi'raj. When the Messenger ﷺ was taken from Al-Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa, several Messengers of Allah have prayed in this mosque and have lived around the mosque for hundreds of years. That is why we Muslims can put our lives on the path to defend the integrity and the respect of this sacred mosque. Given its importance, the Almighty will Himself protect its integrity and honor, inshallah. Some intelligence officers tracked back the earthquakes that had been happening very frequently last year. These earthquakes had never happened before in the Holy Land. So some researchers have found out that Jews were using its technology to create fake earthquakes so that the foundations of the Masjid Al-Aqsa will weaken and the Masjid will destroy itself. The construction of Haikal of Suleimani began in the reign of Hazrat Dawood He died before it was completed and then Hazrat Suleiman took over and completed it. And that is why it is called the Haikal of Suleimani. It remained the most important and the holiest place of worship for the Jews for many years. 
until Bani Israel disobeyed Allah and Allah cursed them and punished them. The Romans attacked Israel, destroyed the heckle of Sulaimani and ousted them from their country. The Muslims then built the Masjid al-Aqsa at that place. Jews believe that if they succeed in building the heckle of Sulaimani for the third time, they will rule the world. Their Messiah Dajjal will appear and lead them. Is there any doubt about what is really going to happen brothers and sisters? We know that the appearance of Dajjal has nothing to do with the third temple or the slaughter of the perfect red heifer. Imam Mahdi has to appear before Dajjal comes. And when that happens, Imam Mahdi and Hazrat Isa will defeat and perish both the Jews and the Dajjal. But the Jews are desperately waiting for that moment. A huge war called the War of Armageddon has also been predicted by authentic hadith and traditions of Islam. And the Jews want to avoid this war since a huge proportion of the Jews will be killed in it. No matter how hard they try or how many plans they make, Allah has the biggest plan of them all. They plan to attack and destroy Masjid Al-Aqsa while Allah plans to send Imam Mahdi salam and Hazrat Isa to fight and eradicate the evil. Without doubt, it is Allah and His great plan which succeeds. A believer is never hopeless even when he is helpless. Do you remember the battle of the Badr? Prophet peace be upon him made dua the whole night. He took his hands all the way up so much so that his cloak fell off. O oh Allah, give me what you promised me. If this group of people lose and die, there will be no one left on this earth who calls your name. The misguided eye would believe that the Prophet had gone to a desperate state. He is praying so much to the Almighty because he might be afraid, unsure. Similarly, when the Prophet was stuck in the cave with Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq that was the moment when he had an unwavering belief in the Almighty. A misguided eye would see that they are soon going to be caught. But Allah was with them. In both these situations, on the surface, the expected outcome was dismal and devastating. But when there is Allah with you, is there anything to be afraid of, to be hopeless of? That is what a believer does. When he is desperate, broke, does not know where to go or what to do, but he has complete trust in the Almighty. As the brothers and sisters, we should never lose hope and stop praying. Allah is close. He has not abandoned us. He never will. How can the lives and blood of the Ummah go in waste? Can it? No, it cannot. The Jews will take them to hell and destruction, Allah willing.